In Acts chapter 24, Felix told Paul that it was inconvenient for him to think about accepting Christ at this point, to consider Christ. I wonder how many have found living for God to be inconvenient. Is it inconvenient to be faithful to attend Bible study and worship? Is it inconvenient to tithe? Is it inconvenient to share Jesus with my friends and my faith? Is it inconvenient to be honest in my dealings? How inconvenient is your Christianity? Perhaps, Perhaps a modern prayer would go like this. Lord, I will take all that Christ has for me. He died on the cross for my sins. I'll take that gift. He offers me his mercy and grace. I'll take that gift. He sustains and encourages me. I'll take that gift too. I want all I can get, but it's inconvenient for me to give anything back right now. Maybe later. I wonder if that describes many in today's churches. Perhaps that's why our Christianity is so weak. I believe that many honestly intend to change, to do better. But they're just inconvenienced right now. And they keep putting it off and putting it off until a later time when we have a new set of circumstances or perhaps put it off until our finances change or put it off until I get out of school or when school gets started again or put it off until I know more about God or when I get a little older or maybe when I get a little more spiritual. Well, when are we going to do it? If we are going to serve Christ, then now is the time to do it. If we're going to be better Christians, now is the time to start acting on that. If you're going to read the Bible, start. If you're going to attend, start. If you're going to be a Christian, you need to live for Jesus Christ. Excuses are endless when we choose to be inconvenienced. And many choose inconvenience. Jesus said, Luke 9, 23, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. Deny yourself, not look out for number one. So what do we need to do? Well, first of all, begin where you are. You can't begin where you're not. So here, this is where you are. Good or bad, that's where you are. That's where you start. We're at different points spiritually. We don't look at others and say, well, if I was there, we just start where we are. We encourage one another. Proverbs says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. The church setting is to be one of an encouraging spiritual growth, not just good fellowship. If your church doesn't encourage you to grow spiritually, you need to find a church that will help you grow spiritually. The intake of the Word of God gives us direction for life. We need to be reading the Bible all the way through every year, maybe twice or three times a year. Barnabas was an encourager. He got it. It's about people. It's about encouraging others. Felix never really understood Paul. He viewed Christian life as a choice of convenience a club to join perhaps, or a political group to be a part of, but not a new life in Jesus Christ. Nicodemus understood. John 3 is the story of Nicodemus. He understood finally that the Christian life was about being born again. It's about eternity. It's about accepting the truth of Jesus Christ and allowing him into our life. The Christian life is about our relationship with Jesus Christ. How is your relationship with Jesus Christ? Is it growing? Is it getting closer all the time? Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? That's where it begins. And the Bible says if you will trust in Jesus and invite him into your heart, he'll come into your life and you'll have eternal life. Too many have made the Christian life about simply actions. They want to do good deeds and give, things like that. But it's about a relationship. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you don't have anything. Nothing else counts. It's time to begin. Begin where you are. And then secondly, do what the Bible tells us to do. Read the Bible and then do what it says. It's pretty simple if you'll do that. What is hard is deciding if we want to fully give our life to Christ or just give a token part of our life to Christ. If you're ready to commit totally to the Lord, then it's pretty easy. You do what the Bible says do. And if you'll do that, you'll figure it out. Others won't understand, and sometimes you may wonder if you're doing the right thing, but you are, and if you do what the Bible says, it'll all even out, and you'll find a wonderful life to live. The psalmist said, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I may not sin against thee. 
The Bible is our guide to knowing God better. Paul preached holiness and righteousness and self-control. He preached judgment to come. And when Felix heard him, he said, well, it's just not convenient right now. Felix didn't want to hear that he had a moral responsibility to those around him. He didn't want to hear that worship is to honor God. Felix wanted to be worshipped himself as if he were a god. And he liked the grandeur and the pomp and circumstance and all that the hype that made, was made about his, himself, but he neglected to turn his attention to God. The message of holiness and separation from the world will always demand that we live a life on a higher plane than what this world offers. Holiness will confront sin every time when we start getting closer to God. So begin where you are, do what the Bible says. And number three, practice repentance. It's not, do you feel remorseful? Repentance is changing, go a different direction. Felix was afraid, but he didn't repent. He didn't turn around. He didn't change directions. He resisted making the decision. He wanted to put it off until it was easy. It may never be easy. But you make the decision because it's right. When we wait for another day, we miss thousands of opportunities to enjoy the blessings of the Christian life. We often miss our chance to make things right with God when we put it off. Repentance is agreeing with God. It's living God's way. It's doing what God's Word says. Living for God is a positive way of living. Very positive and encouraging way of living. We make things right with God just by doing what God says do. And he makes it clear in the Bible. There's no human rationalization that can say our sin is okay. The Bible is clear with what's right and what's wrong. You may dabble and say drinking. And one day it's going to catch up with you and you'll lack the control. You'll pay a price. You may dabble and with your marriage vows. And one day you're going to cross a line. You may dabble in sinful habits but one day they will take control of your life. You can enjoy picking apart great biblical truths, but one day your human reason and carnal thinking will remove every bit of confidence you have in God in church and leave you very dry and lonely and apart from God. You may enjoy laziness, but one day you'll have a price to pay. You can host self-rationalization and self-justification until that day comes when bitterness overtakes your life. You can simply pursue life just day by day. And one day, waiting for a convenient day to trust in God will seem like wasted time. John wrote, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Those are the words of Jesus inviting you into eternal life. You've put it off long enough. Today is the day to receive Jesus as your Savior. The Bible says that any who will turn to him and invite him into their life, who will repent, turn around from their way, and begin to follow God's way, and ask him to help, that he will enter your life, he'll come in, and he'll give you eternal life. Just that simple. In prayer, ask God to save you, and he will.